हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम बैक टू अवर चैनल दिस वीडियो इज रिगार्डिंग मल्टी क्लॉक साइकिल पाथ एंड दिस इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट आस्पेक्ट ऑफ अ डिजिटल डिजाइन एंड वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न अबाउट मल्टी क्लॉक साइकिल पाथ विद द हेल्प ऑफ अ मल्टी स्टेज काउंटर ऑल दो आई हैव ऑलरेडी क्रिएटेड अ सेपरेट वीडियो ऑन मल्टी स्टेज काउंटर इट्स लिंक विल अपियर ऑन द टॉप राइट कॉर्नर ऑफ द वीडियो प्लीज गो थ्रू इट इट विल गिव यू द बेसिक अंडरस्टैंडिंग अबाउट multi stage counters if you have already gone through it let us start the next part of the video friends let us revise the basic principles of static timing analysis i have taken this flip flop to flip flop path for illustration This is a clock, and as per static timing analysis, if flip flop one throws some data on first positive edge of the clock, it must be captured by flip flop two on the next positive clock edge. And while doing so, flip flop one take some propagation time delay. Uh, let us say it is equal to T C Q, and the output reaches at the input of combination logic. and this combination logic further takes some uh, propagation delay let us say it is equal to tcl and the output reaches at the input of flip flop 2 and as we know every flip flop has some setup time requirement and let us say flip flop 2 has a uh, setup requirement of tsu it is quite clear from this illustration that the minimum time period of operation should be equal to tcq plus tcl plus t setup and from there we can derive maximum operating frequency which will be always less than equal to 1 by t minimum friends i am going to conclude two basic points from this discussion which will be our basis for understanding multi clock cycle paths the first point is if flip flop 1 throw some data on its output at nth edge of the clock it must be captured by flip flop 2 in the next clock edge and the second point is combinational delay must be less than the time period of a clock and it should be accommodated in such a way that input to flip flop 2 must be passed to its output safely without any violation now let us talk about multi clock cycle paths friends let me define multi clock cycle path first a multi clock cycle path is a flip flop to flip flop path where the logic delay in between the flip flops is permissible to take more than one clock cycle let me elaborate if a flip flop to flip flop path has a combinational delay which is more than the time period of the clock itself it is a problematic situation this is going to cause violation in our design and functionality of the design will fail but still there are few special paths which are allowed to have combination logic path delay more than the time period of the clock and there will be no violation in our design functionality will not fail data from flip flop to flip flop will travel safely and those paths are called multi clock cycle paths in this design there are many flip flop to flip flop paths almost all of the paths follow uh, the basic principle of static timing analysis and the two assumptions that we stated previously that are the combinational delay between flip flop to flip flop is always less than the time period of the clock and data is captured on the clock edge which is just next to the throwing clock edge for example let us take uh, this particular path from flip flop 2 to flip flop 3 if flip flop 2 throw some data on its output on nth positive edge of the clock it must be captured by flip flop 3 in the next positive edge of the clock in this diagram there are two exceptional paths marked orange and green and one of the path is going from flip flop 1 to flip flop 7 and another is going from flip flop 5 to flip flop 7 these two paths does not follow 
the two assumptions that we stated above they have a combinational delay which is more than the time period of the clock and flip flop 7 will not capture the data on the clock edge which is just next to the uh, clock edge when flip flop 1 and flip flop 5 will throw data these paths can cause violation in our design if they are not multi clock cycle paths but in this example i am assuming that both of these paths are multi clock cycle paths now one obvious question will raise into your mind that what is special in multi clock cycle paths why they don't cause any violation how the functionality is unaltered so i am going to explain you multi clock cycle paths with the help of multi stage compass in the next section of the video friends this part is a crux of the video please listen it very carefully i have taken a 4 bit multi stage counter and divided it into two stages each stage is a 2 bit counter this is the first stage and this is the second stage and as i already explained in multi stage counter video when stage 1 counter overflows this overflow condition is detected by control logic first let us see when this first stage counter overflow so this overflows when it reaches the value 1 1 as counter 1 is a free running counter so it will only take 4 clock cycles to overflow and then again it roll back to 0 0 and then again after 4 clock cycles it overflows and this overflow is detected by control logic and in turn control logic will give one load pulse this load pulse is going to register part of the uh, second stage counter on each load pulse input of this register array will be loaded to its output and as we know this load pulse will come after four clock cycles in this case so array 2 will have a huge amount of time to give its output this is four cycles in this case even if we assume that if this array 2 gives its output in less than the clock period of the clock there is no use because load pulse is going to come after four clock cycles only so this type of path does not necessarily need to give its output in less than uh, one clock cycle so this uh, array 2 delay that is combination logic delay can be more than one clock cycle and there will be no violation in this case so this type of uh, paths are called multi clock cycle paths now in this multi stage counter design we have both the types of paths one is multi clock cycle path and another is normal flip flop to flip flop path which follows the assumptions of static timing analysis in counter 1 this is a flip flop to flip flop path and array 2 is acting as a combinational delay and its delay must be less than the time period of the clock because this register array is capturing its input value at every clock cycle and in counter 2 we already discussed array 2 need not to have a delay uh, less than or equal to the time period of the clock it can be more than even two clock cycles in this case moreover multi clock cycle paths give good relaxation to synthesis as well as pnr tools because these paths are not timing critical paths by properly constraining multi clock cycle paths the focus can be given to other timing critical paths so constraining multi clock cycle paths is very important aspect of a digital design i am going to create a separate video on constraining multi clock cycle paths with this i am going to end this episode so please don't forget to subscribe our channel and for notification of the videos press the bell icon thank you so much